Welcome to Jade Kind Gaming. I'm Adam. Today we're going to be doing another fantasy world building video. And today we will be forming a cave. Uh, now, the cave is a bit more of a natural structure than I've been doing. And I think maybe because of that, I'm going to use... I'm going to use a hex. Yeah. So I'll come here. I get sort of a hex here. Um, now, this hex paper I just sort of printed off. Uh, uh, you know, you can find places on online. So it's, you know, an easy way to. Um, to get that. Just as far as doing a template, although I will be using Sharpie just because. When I print it off, it's obviously, instead of being uh, those light shaded lines, it's dark. Um, see, my little note here is a natural dungeon like structure, possible lava, ice, rivers, um, what lives there, maybe underwater areas. Um, I'm not sure exactly which one I want to do yet, but while I said I'm going to use that, I'm going to use a pencil first because really the first thing you want to do is get sort of a general idea of a flowing. Uh, shape through the cave, and I think I want to. Uh, and of course, these are going to represent five foot hexes. So I want to like enter here or something like that. Um, you know, around this area. And there's like a loose flowing section. make that little entryway where it curves around. So you have sort of a narrow little entry. Um, let's open it quickly up into like a big area. This will be probably some sort of monster's den. Just try and use the sharpie. So, because you don't really have to follow exactly along with the hexes um, to generally get it, you need to sort of get sort of a general idea, and that'll give you more of an idea of how big the area is. I just like it for natural structures better than um, squares because it does just sort of lend to a more flowing area. Um, and that's a good point. Speaking of a flowing area, since I'm bothering to use Sharpie, water is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to have sort of a Something around here. I see maybe there's a hole near the ceiling here. And like a waterfall sort of structure. Sort of flows away in that direction. Um, and then on this end of this waterfall, um, I'm gonna make it where you know, if a perception check kind of thing, or whatever, you notice that there's a little area behind it because 
I love some little areas behind uh, waterfalls. And then, and simply enough, close off the majority of this room. Um, I'm going to put like sort of a little line there and say that essentially there's a little area that is, you know, where the water carves out, but essentially it goes down to ground level and you'd have to essentially get in the water. So this is sort of an underwater area and you could follow this water for a little ways. Until it opens up. Uh, I'm going to sit around here. And so they can give in, get out in this area. Passageway leading off of here. Hmm. Well, maybe a little round bit here and sort of a fork right around this spot. So they kind of have to choose which way to go. And this one. Sort of wraps around in a circle. with some little tight spots. And almost like the idea of having what seems like a very much, you know, especially since we've just gotten that, um, so there's a carved out room back here. We'll get to deciding whatever's in there later uh, while I'm thinking about it. Obviously this river has to continue. And it can just sort of keep going until it goes onto an area that really is too small for the players to continue. Comes outside somewhere. So. So this one here, let's see, it's, it looks like it's widening. Just um, hmm. Yeah. I'm going to close this off technically, but with the idea that, you know, if need be, and I'll put sort of in uh, a pen here, you know, if you need, essentially if this is going to connect to another map, you could have sort of a secret passage right here. So essentially, if you need this to connect into a larger dungeon or something like that, and you just want this to be the entryway right there, if you want it just to be a sort of a, a small little dungeon encounter, which is how I'm primarily going to be designing it, then, you know, this is, you know, pretty fine. Um, 
So for this, I want to grab another piece of paper. And with just see, just a pen, we will label these. Uh, see, this room here is going to be a one, this here a two. We have B, we'll have C1, C2, uh, and C3, so, and then, whatever, um, I'm going to have this just sort of be a weird little bit here, and then we'll have D, and all of those are now going to get replaced with Sharpie because, again, this paper just makes it really hard to see pen. Like that, that's why that secret door is actually almost would work as a secret. This one wouldn't. So, see, what I did on here was a natural dungeon-like structure, um, and I ended up doing rivers and an underwater area. And we'll do some little things as far as what lives here. What's here, I guess, essentially. So yeah, we have different rooms labeled. Um, and essentially, this could be three, you know, different sizes, really. You could just make this be the spot where it was like here and you can't go further and just have one little room um, and it should work like that and of course you could have this larger expanse and have this entire thing be a dungeon and then you can have it even bigger by essentially connecting off whatever from there for something if you want to connect it to a actual dungeon like a, like a constructed one, or if you want to have an extra exit there where that takes them, you know, that's the passage that gets through the mountain, or whatever you want to do. Essentially, if it's not get in and then get out through the same way, that's your back door. Um, which could be secret or could just be obvious, depending on whatever the plot needs. But, you know, that's, that's essentially the idea I'm going to leave for there. Um, so whatever, we'll mark as... A1. Uh, this room, I'm gonna, you know, keep it on camera. I'm gonna think with this room that it's Goblin Encounter. Um, it just sort of has that sort of little room entry feel. Um, so I'm gonna call that So it's a goblin stand. I've already talked about that. I'm not going to write that down. Um, a small goblin camp. Uh, with water. Coming in from above and going out I probably spelled beneath there a little closer Whatever, I said before, I can't spell. Beneath one wall. So yeah, pretty simple. That'd be our little goblet encounter, and of course we have a two, which is the loot for that. 
Um, and what I'm going to describe this as is uh, whatever. Perception check to notice area behind waterfall. Waterfall. Which has a broken lock and contains various old tattered Nobles, clothes, and possessions. Essentially, the idea that you know they found, you know, that they whatever some either some noble ran from the goblins or they knocked over a caravan or whatever. They got the stuff. It's what they think is fancy. It's old. It's destroyed. But the goblins are like, hey, we're living the high life. We're fancy goblins. Um, it sort of can give personality. Um, and I'm also going to go under the assumption that back here in B is an area that the goblins don't know about. So this is as far as the goblins have gone. You're now, if, you, if your players go behind here, they're going uh, beyond what that, you know, what that is. And, you know, back in B, I'm going to call that the guardian room. And I'm just going to say, uh, uh, group of, well, I'm going to call it skeletons Attack anyone who tries to pass through this room. Pretty plain, pretty simple, just the idea that there's a group of skeletons that are guarding and saying you can't come through here. Um, you know, of course, we'll go up to this C's. Right, so C1. Huh. Yeah. C1. What do I want to do? Okay, just did skeletons. I'm going to say this one is almost inconsequential. Uh, like, like accidental rather, um, and it's sort of um, poisonous mold grows on the walls of this room. And I'm gonna, I mean, I'll leave it kind of vague, but risk of poison or disease to anyone who enters it. Fair enough. So that room, you know, was originally nothing, it was just sort of a passage, um, 
Huh, I just got an idea. Because originally I was thinking that these were probably guarding whatever was here, because this is, you know, obviously manufactured. But this is the larger room. This is clearly what they're going to be guarding. That I'm going to have fun with. So, as a previous adventure, um, there is a room carved out of the stone here. It has been well moved in, but its occupant is long dead. It contains personal possessions and Homely, probably spelled wrong. Homely comforts. The remains of its creator way on the floor. Uh, possible for players to learn of this person's life here. He was trapped and created a home. Uh, and we're going to say uh, through writings has instructions to bypass the skeletons or water and prepare cave fungus to eat. So essentially this is someone that you know whether they didn't know of this exit or you know you can work in even that this was newly you know newly widened through or something but that, you know, for some reason or other, this guy was stuck here. He could get water, he could, you know, eat off of the, the fungus that has, so, you know, been poisoning them. He's figured out a life here. Maybe he's not even trapped. Maybe this was just his home, and he, you know, made the best of it. But the idea being that someone lived here. Adds flavor. Um, makes it interesting. So, that's just an interesting idea. Aren't I clever? Maybe, maybe not. Your decision. And with C3, I'm, I'm going to sort of create this one in relevant to this one and call it um, an old 
колом yards fish run hits rusty iron so they just got a rusty iron golem sort of in this. So really this area was sort of almost what he, you know, anything dangerous that was here, either he's used or he's cleared, and this is sort of his spot. Um, the skeletons, I guess he couldn't kill, or maybe his way, method of bypassing them. Um, you know, puts them guarding the door, you know, the exits, but he's able to get in, get water, then leave through or something. Somehow or another... He's able to get through, but not out. Oh well, plot, big deal. That's what I said happened. Um, and then of course we have D. Now D is therefore either they're guarding the exit, that's possible, or they're guarding whatever's in here. Whether it's keeping it in or keeping it out. It could be either way. I'm going to say they're keeping it in, because, you know, that's fun. Um, there are rusty metal bars blocking the entrance to this room. And I'm gonna, we'll just make it, uh, inside is an old, uh, what I'm gonna call poison drink. He is asleep at the time that the players that spell wrong I don't know how to spell. That's how I spell that there. You know, it just looks weird because it's all written on top of better players. Uh, good enough. Uh, good enough. So he's asleep at the time that the players arrive. So the idea being that um, in this uh, dungeon, there, you know, that you know, first off, it could just be this little first room area. You enter. There's, you know, you find some goblins. There, it's a camp. Um, you know, you can find that back behind the waterfall, they, you know, they've ransacked sort of an old nobles, they're, they're living the high life, they got their fancy goods, you can even have some, you know, some of the goblins hanging around wearing, you know, tattered noble women's dresses, have fun with it, you know, you can really play with that and get some humor in it, goblins are great for humor, you can really use them for that. Furthermore, if you take the river and you sort of can go through, um, like sort of an underwater area, you come up into an area that's guarded by skeletons, they're guarding the room not wanting anything to leave either way. If their primary purpose is to guard them, people from going this way, then maybe that's why this guy could get past the skeletons to get to water, but not to get out of the room. He could, you know, his method of blocking them is to get the skeletons to guard just this part of the room. It could even be something with manipulating this. The idea being that this, dra this drake here, dragon however, is what they're guarding, keeping it in. So they're, they're enchanted undead in, in the sort of guarding room. You come up here, you get sort of a split. If you come up here, you end up with an area where there's 
you know, what is ultimately poisonous moss, mold, that sort of thing in the room. Um, the other end is guarded by an old rusty iron golem. Uh, the golem was created, you know, the golem's not probably patrolling, maybe he at one point patrolled, but at this point he's sort of deranged, he's old, he, he's that sort of rusted out kind of bucket from an owner that's been long dead that lived in here. You know, carved out, made a home, homely comforts, you know, the idea be the, that you're going through this cave and all of a sudden, you know, you get to this spot where, you know, like, there's you know, there's furniture, there, you know, there would be a bed, there, I mean, and while a lot of it would be old and falling apart, you know, just like the corpses, you know, it's obvious somewhat, you know, this was a home, not just, you know, sort of a little spot where he's making, he lived here, you know, sort of make that evident, you know, he has writings, you know, to help explain things, and also, to, you know, it's always interesting to give that sort of idea of a backstory to the players. So that's sort of what this little top area is, and then through this little bottom one, there's some iron bars that are, you know, they're barely holding on anyways. Probably at this point, the main thing that keeps the drake, the dragon, that's vague. Whatever. Because um, it's your big baddie. Your big baddie. My idea is, you know, sort of a poison drake, sort of an almost an acidic sort of drake that's sort of back here. At this point, most likely the primary thing that's keeping him back in here is that he's grown larger than the exit. The bars probably aren't doing anything anymore. The, you know, it's probably the, you know, he could probably, he's probably old enough that he could get past the skeletal guards, but in both accounts, he's bigger than the exit. Um, so, you know, so that would be sort of the idea that, that you, you know, you make that sort of, it's your dragon. I call it a drake because the idea, you know, depending, you can kind of get different, different feels for it. Um, I do want it to be very animalistic. A lot of times I use my dragons as animalistic as opposed to the Dungeons and Dragons intelligent beings. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of that a lot of the time. Uh, at least not for the general dragons. I mean, I get it if you have like an awakened dragon here and there, but as far as all dragons are these intelligent creatures, yet they're monsters the same time. I don't know. It's whatever. Um, but yeah, so anyways, regardless, having that, you know, that's, uh, so, you know, the big monster that's asleep. He's slumbering. He probably spends a lot of his time doing that. He's bored. He's got nothing to do in here. He's trapped in this room. So all of a sudden, the players, once he notices them, are going to be quite an excitement. And, you know, if you need the dungeon to continue, whether it's to, uh, you know, to an exit, a pathway that leads through this mountain, or whether you need, you know, it to enter, you know, a larger man-made dungeon you got sort of an exit can be in the back of the room with the drake. It's a perfect spot, the difficult part to get through. So, you know, there, there's sort of an idea for, you know, just, uh, you know, a cave. Um, I will put, you know, I'll put this on, a link to this online. It took, what, uh, 35 minutes? Would it last 30 minutes, probably? So a half hour made, what well, you know, what is not a huge, but what is a basic cave. Uh, likewise, if you go through the same process, you could just as well keep going with the same sort of idea and link off from here. Uh, I would probably try and recreate this very little bit of this here, like I sort of have this little outside here, and then keep it going. Uh, as I put in my notes, other great ideas for caves other than water is things like if, you know, it's cold and there's icicles, or if there's, you know, you get really deep and there's lava flows through it. Fun things like that. Um, but yeah. So, let me know whatever your thoughts are, if you come up with any caves of your own, um, if, you have, if you have tips, or if you just uh, have comments, comment below, um, and have a great day.